All right, good morning, everybody. Jason here from AV Pro Global. Uh, today's gonna be a really cool webinar. Uh, we're gonna be talking a lot today about our Comfrex line. Uh, we're gonna give you a bunch of really good examples of uh, when to use this product and, and how to use this product. We'll look at a bunch of diagrams and, and just talk about some of the things that will help you guys as integrators uh, be able to uh, install some of these systems successfully. And we just wanted to show you guys what some of these things are capable of. Uh, the title of the uh, webinar, as you see, is Interoperable and Expandable. So we'll be talking a lot about those two things specifically with these with these Comfrex products. Um, so I've got uh, Nick from our marketing department. He is watching the question box. I do see some familiar faces uh, on the attendee list. So thank you guys for coming back and uh, checking out this webinar. Uh, if you're new to the company, I've got a couple of uh, cool slides uh, here in the next few slides to kind of tell you about who we are and what we're all about. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So who are we? AV Pro Global. Uh, again, um, thank you if you've attended our webinars before and if you're uh, continued support. Uh, if you're new to the company, you just want to go over a couple things to introduce ourselves. Uh, we're a company from about 2011. Uh, our CEO, Jeff Murray, came from a background of electronics his entire career. Um, his son, Matt, is our CTO. Uh, he's a very driven guy. And, you know, a few years ago, we, um, we noticed, uh, the company noticed at a very young age, in the field that there was not a lot of test equipment for all the new 4K HDR type stuff that we knew was coming. So uh, Jeff with his electronics background and coming from, from uh, the old company Sencor who made test equipment for many years in the past, especially for TV repair and things like that and calibration of course. Uh, Jeff spent many years with the Imaging Science Foundation teaching classes all over the world about picture quality and, and how, to, how to calibrate TVs. So just taking that knowledge and taking Matt's drive um, the company came together in 2011. We started off making some HDMI test equipment, and uh, that kind of got us into um, into the world of extenders and, and matrix switches. And uh, you know, and here we are, uh, 2020. We're we're going strong, and and uh, we're doing you know AV Pro Edge for our uh, distribution and extender products. We've got Meridio as our test equipment uh, division. We've got Bullet Train as our HDMI cable division. So so lots of cool st stuff going on with our company. Uh, company today um, our goal for you guys is really simple uh, we we want to make tools that are easy oh. we want to make we want to make tools that are easy for you guys and products that are easy for you guys to install and and uh, to really solve a lot of problems that we're seeing out there in the AV industry uh, the stuff we'll be talking about specifically today is going to be our Comfrex product uh, which is a little geared more towards uh, commercial environments and, and classrooms and, and things like that and like I said in, in this presentation we'll go over uh, we'll go over those things in depth um, with our technology. I'm um, sorry. Um, we, uh, you know, we strive very much to to build a, a very good product, a very robust, lots of features. Uh, we've been in the 18 gig 4K game now for several years, and that's just really what we're all about: is just staying ahead of the game and and building good, robust products that are easy to use. If you guys have met me before, uh, nice to see you again. Um, again, my name is Jason. I've been with AV Pro now for a little over three years. Um, I travel around for the company and I do trainings for distributors and dealers and we do ISF courses and, and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, I've been doing this for a really long time. I love it to death. Uh, as soon as I was old enough to work, I got a job in AV and uh, here we are 21 years later. Um, I started calibrating about 2007 or eight. I've done lots and lots of calibration work. That's probably where I know a lot of you guys from. Um, 2017, I was uh, very, very proud to uh, to get nominated and, and get uh, and to win the Dealerscope 40 Under 40. Uh, so just a little bit about me and my experience. Um, I'll provide you guys with my information at the end of the webinar. Um, you guys uh, know if you've dealt with me before that um, you know you guys can email me and, and get a hold of me anytime if you have any questions about the product. Uh, of course, we have a great tech support team and all that stuff as well too. So what is Comfrex? Why are we here? Um, you know, the, the big point of Comfrex is to deliver an end-to-end -end solution for conference rooms, classrooms, a lot of different commercial environments. Huddle spaces are a huge thing right now. Uh, you know, being able to have meetings with people who are, you know, halfway across the world, um, you know, this is the kind of stuff that's important these days uh, in these types of environments. Um, the Comfrex solutions that we're going to be showing you today, uh, again, we try to make them as robust as possible and try to make them as uh, unique as possible, uh, being able to do things that, that others have not been able to do in the past. So uh, of course, for all of our Comfrex products, we're going to be working with HDMI, DisplayPort, Mini DisplayPort, uh, USB-C, which is a huge thing right now. Uh, you know, we just got back from ISC, and there was a lot of talk about USB-C being used for video transmission. And of course, you're going to have your legacy uh, devices that are going to have things like VGA. 
Um, you know, so we're definitely going to be able to support all these types of connections and all these types of situations. Not only are we going to be able to support, let people plug in, but we're also going to uh, let those dis let the um, source and the display be pretty far apart from each other. So think about a big classroom you might be in, or a big office room, or a big huddle space. Uh, you know, because of the technology that we use, uh, distance is is not going to be an issue with with building these systems for your rooms. Um, we want to make things easy. You know, we know that um, you know educators and and people who work in these types of environments. These guys are not AV experts, so we wanted to do some really simple things like auto sense switching, plug and play type things, uh, just to make anybody be able to bring in any type of device, whether that's a phone, tablet, laptop, what have you, and just be able to plug into that system and, and do their job without having to fiddle with the AV system. Uh, so sharing a PowerPoint right now, like as we're doing today, uh, obviously going to be very important when you're doing these types of presentations, uh, web browsers, uh, video or photo. You know, these are a necessity these days in any kind of co conference or classroom where, where somebody's going to be doing a presentation. And again, like I just mentioned before, these these rooms are used by hundreds of different people and they're not technical people a lot of times. So, uh, you know, being able to go plug and play and make things really simple is very important to us. And it's really something that we, we concentrate on. Now, for you guys, uh, you know, one of the big questions always comes up is how do we, how do we control these products? Um, you know, if you're familiar with our AV Pro Edge matrix switches, you know that all of those products work with uh, any of the major control systems. Uh, of course, Crestron, Savant, RTI, URC, I listed a few here, but all the major control systems are going to be uh, going to be compatible with with the Conferex solutions. Uh, the auto sensing and, and audio switching is really cool. Uh, again, it's anybody can walk in with any device and plug in. And because uh, our wall plates, for example, and, and our switches, for example, uh, because those things do auto sensing and auto switching, you know, somebody with no AV background at all can just come in, plug in their laptop, for example, and uh, the system automatically switches over for that input. And we also did a, a couple other things cool that are interesting. Uh, you know, if you're in a restaurant environment where there's music playing or maybe the audio from a football game, uh, somebody may need to call out like an order or something like that, for example. So there may be a microphone in a, in a restaurant type environment or even a classroom type environment. We do some really cool things like uh, what we call auto ducking. So let's say you are in a restaurant, somebody's playing some music, and you need to call out an order, for example, or the, the uh, server needs to call out an order. Uh, they can just speak into the microphone. The music will duck automatically and, and kind of lower in volume. Well, well, the microphone volume will go up. So a lot of this, again, like I said, is meant to be plug and play and meant to be very easy to use. So where would you use a Comfrex system? Uh, we're going to go over a, a few of these examples here in the presentation today. But uh, a single office, single room, single zone. Uh, there's just a display up on the wall. Uh, maybe there's a couple of sources to plug into. Maybe there's a podium in the in the in the room for the presenter. Uh, also, huddle spaces, as I've mentioned before, huge right now. Um, you know, we go into these huddle rooms in these big corporate environments, and we want be able we want to be able to just plug and play into those situations. Conference rooms, of course, classrooms, like I mentioned before. Uh, universities. You know, if you've got somebody uh, doing a, a presentation for a thousand people in an auditorium at a university. You may have cameras involved and things like that, so you may need multiple inputs. Auditoriums, museums, hospitals, you know, the list goes on and on. These are just some of the common uh, environments that we're going to be putting these products in. Um, one thing that's really great about this is all the Conferex products are interoperable with each other. Not only are they interoperable with each other, they're also interoperable with our other AV Pro Edge product. They're also interoperable with other uh, AV manufacturers of different, of different things. So, you know, in, in a lot of cases these days, we have AVRs and, and displays and projectors and things where, um, you know, they have HD base T inputs directly on them. So uh, everything that we do um, in that regard, it's all going to be, uh, again, plug and play. Uh, you know, you may have a, a projector with an HD base T straight in. So you can go straight from the switch HD base T straight into the projector HD base T without the need of any other converters or extender receiver transmitter type things as well. Um, Everything that we do works with 4K. Uh, so if you're doing 1080p right now, that's awesome. Everything's going to work just fine. Uh, we did kind of go a little crazy on these products, and we did make them 18 gig capable. Uh, if you're not using that today, that's fine. That's cool. Uh, everything will work just great. But uh, you know, if you do make that jump to 4K in your classroom, for example, or or some kind of educational building, or maybe it's a, a hospital where where a lot of detail and a lot of resolution is important, uh, of, of course, we're going to want to uh, be able to be compatible with 4K, and, and of course, we are. Um, one thing that's nice too is uh, all of our Conferex products support CEC pass through. So if you have those situations where uh, you want to use CEC uh, in, in a case where you know maybe you want to have control over a TV for just maybe power, volume, maybe some simple things like that on a display, uh, all of our products do support CEC pass through. So not only are you going to get the audio and video signals through, but you can also get your CEC commands through as well. We partner up with HDMI, HD base T. Uh, I mentioned earlier about the auto ducking if you're if you're uh, connecting to a microphone. 
Um, you know, if you're an older, if you're using an older PC or older computer with a with a VGA connection, you might have some, uh, you know, non-standard uh, or or what's not normal considered today resolution. Um, you know, we support all the different resolutions with VGA as well. So no, again, no matter what you plug in, no matter who it is, everything's going to work just fine. Um, what else is great about the Confrex solution is uh, it's expandable. Um, you can go from one display to many displays. You can go from one source uh, to many sources to many displays. Um, you can go short distances if you want to with you, you know, just regular HDMI cables, whether they're copper-based or uh, fiber-based, like some of our AOC cables from Bullet Train. Uh, if you do use HD base T technology with the Confrex, you can go as high as 100 meters, um, which is pretty typ typical for HD base T. Uh, if you are using our Cloud9 uh, matrix switch, which isn't necessarily a Confrex product, but it is used a lot in commercial environments because you can do video walls and things like that with it. Uh, if, if you are dabbling in the Cloud9, you can take that 100 meters and you can extend it even further to 150 meters. And then of course, if you're going with a fiber solution, you know, guys, the, the sky's the limit. Uh, you can go uh, at least a kilometer in, in most cases with fiber. So think of any giant installations that you do in giant facilities, uh, hospitals, uh, stadiums, and things like that. Um, you know, if you need that really, really long distance in a multiple story office building, for example, uh, you can always do that with fiber. And of course we have fiber to HDMI extenders and things like that as well. Um, so again, no matter what we're doing here, uh, whatever the resolution is, no matter who the user is, uh, no matter what your uh, other manufacturers are in your system for your other devices, say projectors, uh, audio amplifiers and things like that, we do work with everything. Okay, so let's break this down now and look at some of the things that you'll need to, to build a system like this. Um, there's three types of products that you'll, you'll need when putting together a, a Comfrex system. Number one, you need a connection point for the sources. So that could be uh, HDMI transmitters, or that can be straight HDMI cables. Uh, if the distances are fairly short, you know, go with normal HDMI cables. Uh, you know, in, in most cases, you can go at least 15 meters. With some of our bullet train cables, you can go even further than that. And you can go really crazy, you know, 20 meters if you need to, or even more, even 100 meters if you go with fiber inside of the HDMI cable. So we're gonna need a connection point for the sources. Uh, we're also gonna need a backbone for the distribution. So that's gonna include all of your switchers, uh, your category cable from getting from point A to point B if you're going to be using HD base T or if you're not using HD base T uh, because the switches can do both. Uh, you can go um, you know shorter distance with just a normal straight HDMI cable or again the AOC uh, fiber optic embedded HDMI cables as well. And then last but not least you'll need a connection point for the display uh, or the local zone. So for the display you may need an HD base T receiver, uh, you may need an audio amplifier, maybe there's a pair of speakers in that room, we have a great, really unique product that uh, I'll, I'll show you guys uh, in the presentation today. That's an audio amplifier and a matrix switch all built in together, which is really cool. So I want you guys to take a quick look at our website, uh, just because I want you guys to kind of see how this stuff is categorized and how easy it is to, uh, to build a system. So if I could just maybe get a quick confirmation from Nick that you can see the, um, you can see the website right now. Nick, how are you looking there? Can you see the website? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, cool, thanks. So uh, if you visit our website, it's avproedge.com forward slash Confrex. Uh, there's a little bit of information there uh, that you can read, which is great. Um, there's a couple of uh, you know diagrams here and examples, a, a quote from our CEO, Jeff Murray, about Confrex and, and how important um, these kind of solutions are today. But the, the real cool thing I want you guys to see is how we've broken it down into these three categories that I just explained on the slide before. So if you're gonna be looking at, at a, um, let me go back here one second, excuse me. If you're gonna be looking at a, um, guys, I'm sorry, give me one second, there we go. If you're gonna be looking at the endpoint or the or the source point for the, the source itself, uh, there's a few different ways to do that. And I wanted just to show you guys uh, real quick here the, the different kind of wall plates that we have. So imagine you're in an environment where, um, let me fire up my pointer here. And imagine you're in an environment where, uh, where you have a wall plate either on a table, uh, maybe the wall plate is on a podium, or maybe the wall plate's physically in a wall somewhere. Uh, we, we do offer a few different solutions for you when it comes to wall plates. The most basic one, the easiest one, is just a straight HDMI wall plate. Um, on the back of this wall plate, you do have an ethernet connection that's gonna be for your HD base T. So this is kind of our basic, if you're just gonna be using HDMI. The step up from here is HDMI, but also has USB-C. Now we mentioned before with USB-C, Lots of new laptops um, are using USB-C. Tons and tons of cell phones and smartphones now are using USB-C. So we definitely wanted to make something that was USB-C and HDMI. And again, this is auto sensing. So if somebody has an HDMI plugged in and somebody else walks in and plugs in a USB-C, 
uh, the, the uh, little wall plate here will automatically switch over for you, which is really nice and convenient. Next to that is HDMI it also has mini display port. Uh, so maybe somebody has a laptop or some other type of source with mini display port. What we wanted to give you guys that flexibility. Uh, the last piece here that you see on the screen is HDMI, but also VGA, as I mentioned before. Somebody may have a legacy device or an older laptop that still uses VGA. So regardless of the type of connection that you have uh, in this situation, we're gonna be able to support all of it. But we do also have down here a basic kit, uh, which is kind of interesting. If you're doing just like a single source, single display, or just more, more of like a simple setup, maybe it's a small single room, a classroom or something like that. We do also have this kit available. It comes as a package, so you don't have to piece things together. But you can get something as simple as the HDMI wall plate with the HD base T receiver on the other end. That's a 70 meter receiver. Uh, so, you know, you can think of what kind of distance you might need there. Uh, now we start talking a little bit about the backbone of the system. These are the, the three switches that we have. Uh, we're going to talk a lot today about this uh, ACCX42 AUHD and the ACCX62 AUHD. Uh, these are both uh, the Comfrex switches that we've uh, that I've kind of talked about already, uh, in a sense that they have their their matrix switches themselves. The difference between the two is the 42 has four inputs, the 62 has six inputs. So just think about how many inputs you may need in the job. Uh, of course, these are expandable, and I've got a cool slide on that later to show you how, how you can get more inputs if you need to. Um, but this is going to have everything that you need uh, as far as the microphone ducking and the audio uh, the audio outputs built in. Um, you know, if you're running to a, a separate audio amplifier for a pair of speakers, or maybe there's distributed audio through the, through the project, uh, you can pull the audio straight from here if you want to as well. And then we also have over here on the right uh, a small tabletop transmitter. So maybe you're uh, in a situation where you have a podium or maybe it's a big conference room with a big table or something like that. Uh, instead of having to reach over and reach down for the for, for a wall plate or maybe there are no walls around you, uh, we wanted to give also a tabletop version as well. So we, I've seen these mounted before kind of underneath the table or on top of the table. Uh, so again, somebody can just walk in with a HDMI cable and a laptop or whatever the case is and just plug into that tabletop transmitter and then boom, the system system's up and running from there. And then last but not least, if you look at this third tab, these are the receivers and the amplifiers. Uh, we have the 100 meter HD base T receiver. Uh, again, audio embedding is built into that guy. Uh, Eated management, all kinds of things that will help you as an integrator, uh, make sure that system's up and running and performing its best. We also have this ultra slim 70 meter HD base T receiver, which is great. Uh, these two products are gonna be plug and play with any of our Comfrex products. Um, so you don't need a, a separate uh, converter or adapter or anything like that. These will just plug straight in. Uh, and then down at the bottom is our ACCX100 ramp. This is a really cool little piece. Um, so if you're doing a system where <clears throat> you have a pair of speakers in the room but no amplifier, uh, this ACCX100 ramp can kind of do everything for you. So this can sort of be the, the brains of the entire system. This is not only going to be your, your, uh, your matrix switch for your video and, and audio signals, but this is also your audio amplifier. Uh, so you notice here we've got a couple of speaker connections. So if, if you hook up your speakers directly to this guy, you're not going to need a separate amplifier or audio distribution system or anything like that. Uh, the, the ramp can do everything for you, which is really cool. Okay, let's switch back over to PowerPoint for just a moment. And okay, so um, if, uh, if we're going to go back to the website here in a minute, because I want you guys to see where some of these resources at, are at, um, especially the, uh, the software that you need if you're going to be using, uh, you know, if you're going to be using... Uh, maybe a Crestron control system. Uh, we want you guys to have all the software. We want you guys to have all the drivers. Uh, we have this section on our website called the index, which will have all the manuals and, and all the, and all those great things. So if we navigate over to the website, we're here on the website now. If we go to products, I'm sorry, lines, Comfrex Audio Solutions, that's the page that we see here, okay? Now if we go over here to resources, We'll go down to index. Now in the index, you'll have all of our different products that we carry. So if we look up, say, the ACCX100 ramp, I can click on that. That brings me to the product page. And then down here, I've got all kinds of you know, technical specifications, what kind of applications this product is used for, different, read set, uh, different resources, like again, the manual, uh, any kind of data sheet that you might need. There's a gallery here for, um, you know, for all your different pictures of, of what the product looks like and then the different uh, pieces that are plug and play compatible uh, with, with, the, uh, with the ramp itself. So again, if you go to our website, it's, we try to make it very easy and very helpful. Uh, just a few clicks, you can kind of navigate around and see exactly what's going on and, and, and you know, what this product can do for you and uh, you know, other things it can do as well. Of course, you can always give us a call. We've got, uh, we've got people on standby all the time. 
uh, to help you build a system, answer questions for you about uh, maybe specific features or what it can and can't do, different capabilities and that kind of thing. So I, I urge everybody to visit the website, um, check out the um, check out the index page. Uh, you know, this is true for every single product that we make, not just these Comfix uh, switchers. And then, um, of course, you can you can check out the three different categories as I talked about before, with uh, endpoints and source points and and backbone and infrastructure and what receivers and amplifiers work with each other and all that great stuff. So uh, again, check out this website and uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Okay, let's flip back over to PowerPoint. And okay, so now what we're going to talk about next, we're going to start looking at different systems one by one uh, and where these products are going to help you build these systems. The first system we're going to look at is a pretty simple system. <clears throat> and this is probably pretty common in a lot of cases. This is a single room, single zone system that maybe is in like an office space. So if we're going to if we're going to build a system, what we're going to do in this next slide is I want to show you the connection diagram for, for this specific office. We're going to be looking at one wall plate transmitter one HD base T receiver and one display. This is pretty common. Uh, again, this is gonna be plug and play and, and easy for you to set up as the integrator. So here's what the wiring diagram would look like. Super, super simple. We've got the PC over here, that's gonna be our source. That's connected to the HDMI wall plate with an HDMI cable. Then between the wall plate and the, uh, the receiver for HD base T, you're gonna have a category cable. And of course that could be anywhere from 100 meters, 70 meters, 150 meters, depending on the application. Uh, so you can go fairly long with a category cable and still get that signal from one point to the next. Now, once the category cable hits the receiver, the receiver is going to convert that back into HDMI, and then boom, we're going to go up here to the display. So there's your wiring diagram. Now, what does it actually look like in real life? If we go to the next slide, uh, this is this is a perfect example. So uh, this is the situation. We've got a, a looks like an office, maybe a corner office. There's a display up here on the wall. Um, they, it looks like they installed the HDMI uh, wall plate transmitter uh, right here on this wall. So uh, this employee could come in, he could plug in his laptop, boom, all this is plug and play. The display turns on and lights up because of the CEC commands. And uh, that, that employee is up and running and ready to start his workday in, 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 in mere seconds. So again, just a quick example of a, of a, very, um, you know, very, uh, a very common system, a single room, single zone, in this case, a single office. Um, you know, and, and I do want to point out, I'm going to mention this many times probably, uh, but this can be a 4K display because all of our products are 4K capable. Um, and I know that's just been a big thing in residential, but in commercial, we're seeing more and more laptops that are 4K. Uh, we're seeing, I mean, it's, it's almost impossible now to find a display that's not 4K. Uh, so we wanted to make these things compatible with, with all these high bandwidth signals and resolutions as well. So that's a single room, single zone, single office system. Let's get a little more complex here. Let's say we're going to look at a conference room. Um, and for this conference room, we're going to be looking at a few things, uh, two wall plate transmitters, one six by two matrix switch, uh, one HD base T audio amplifier with a video receiver, one HD base T receiver, and then various HDMI cables. Uh, of course, the cables you are going to need to connect everything together. Uh, this is going to let somebody share easily from multiple sources. Um, you know, if you're in a controlled environment, uh, as far as how the AV is controlled, this all works with uh, Crestron Control 4, uh, you know, all the big ones that we mentioned before. Uh, if you want to be able to distribute video to just one display or all displays, this is the kind of situation that you're going to you're going to be looking at here. So let's look at the wiring diagram for this situation. Um, this is the uh, CX62. So this is the six input, um, uh, two output Comfrex matrix switch. Uh, let me get my little laser pointer here so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Okay, good. So we've got over here um, a, the audio amplifier, um, the control system, the microphone. So what's going on across the top row here? Um, we've got an audio output, either optical or analog, that's going to connect to our audio amplifier. That's going to power a pair of speakers probably in, in that room or maybe go to audio distribution for, for the entire property. Um, our control system is going to plug in over here. Uh, that's how we're going to have control over the switch. Uh, if there's a microphone involved, the microphone is going to plug in over here. Um, again, that's going to be good for situations where somebody's in a, maybe a large room and they need to speak. Um, if there's a microphone involved, we can certainly use that. We might have one 4K source connected HDMI to uh, to the wall plate. Of course, we're category cable here to one of the HD base T inputs. Our 4K source, another 4K source is maybe plugged in over here to another wall plate. That's going into our second HD base T input. Then we've got four HDMI inputs. So these may be connected directly from different sources. Maybe there's a camera, maybe there's a, some kind of streaming device or, or media player. Uh, you know, whatever the case is, maybe it's a laptop, whatever the case is, we can go 4K straight HDMI in here as well. Now for our two uh, for our two outputs, 
Uh, what we've got here in this diagram is one HD base T output it's going to this display that might be further away or, or way over here on a different wall. And then our HDMI output to a 4K display that might be a little closer. So because we've got all of our inputs and all of our outputs right here, we've got all of our cabling here, we've got the wall plates here, this is all Comfrex product. Um, this is the one single kind of solution that you would need uh, for, for a bigger system like this. Now, if we look next at the four by two, this is the same exact switch, but four inputs instead of, instead of six. Uh, basically, it's the same exact switch from here, guys. You've got the um, you know, your 4K source is plugged into a wall plate here to HD base T. Uh, HD base T output is to one display. HDMI output is to a, another display. You've got your 4K sources down here. Your four inputs are over here: one HD base T, four HDMI. Uh, you do have two outputs over here, as as we know. Um, our control system is going to connect here, so we can uh, we can give the switch different types of commands. Our microphone is going to connect here in case somebody needs to speak. And then, of course, our balanced uh, analog audio or our optical um, toss link connector is going to go out here to, to an audio amplifier. So as I look between these two different slides, the only difference really is, as you can see, is I've got more inputs over here on the 6x2 and a few less inputs over here on the 4x2. So really just think about um, you know, the, the job that you're doing, the situation that you're in, who's going to be using it, how many sources are going to be involved. And that'll kind of help you determine, um, you know, which switch to get for the project. And we do have a lot of cases too, where somebody will go ahead and get the, uh, an integrator will go ahead and get the six by two, uh, even though there might be only one or two inputs being used uh, in that project. But you know, who knows what's going to happen in the future? Maybe they might need a third, fourth, fifth, sixth input. So we do have a lot of integrators out there that are just going to going ahead and um, you know just jumping straight into the the six by two, just for a little bit of future proofing and and um, you know making at least future resistant if possible. So what does this look like in real life? Uh, the diagram that we just looked at for wiring. So we've got uh, the switches over here. This is the six by two. Um, we've got a podium over here. That's where the presenter is going to be. Uh, there's an HDMI um, input here on our Comfrex wall plate. So the person walks in, they hook their laptop in here, boom. Um, that's connected to the switch via ethernet because this is HD base T. Because this is auto sensing, as soon as this person plugs in the laptop and that um, wall plate sees a signal, the switch is going to automatically switch over to the HD base T input. Now from here, there may be another person that needs to show maybe a PowerPoint or something, or maybe they're going to be presenting with this presenter. Uh, they've got their laptop plugged in as he, uh, here as well. Maybe there's another person with another laptop plugged in here as well. And now as far as our outputs go, um, our main output is going to go here up to this ramp. Now why do we want the ramp in here? Remember, on, this, on the CX-62 and the CX-42, those have audio outputs. They don't have speaker outputs. The ramp has a speaker output. So if I take the ramp and I put it right here in the signal chain before the projector, I can just go straight video in here, video out goes into the projector. So this just kind of acts as an as a, as a, as a, as a input and output, just a pass through if anything. But because there is an amplifier built in here, I can pull the audio from whatever the signal is uh, maybe there's music playing in the PowerPoint or whatever the case might be. Maybe they're showing YouTube videos, who knows. But I can pull the audio out from the ramp and go straight to my speakers. Because there's an amplifier built into here, I don't need, I don't need a second amplifier or a separate amplifier uh, or, or audio distribution system. This can do switching and it can do my audio as well. So again, just an example, uh, and there's you know many different many different things you can do here. Maybe there's a projector shining a giant image onto a wall where you're showing the main presentation. Maybe there's a, a, a smaller TV over here showing uh, maybe the the speaker notes from the PowerPoint or whatnot. But in any in any case, you've got uh, up to six inputs, four outputs. Because we threw the ramp in here, that's powering the speakers, and you have your uh, you have your entire system right here without having to have multiple amplifiers and multiple switches and all kinds of different things. I think I may have seen a uh, question come up. Let me just double check. I think uh, between Nick and Tom, you guys are probably on top of this, but uh, okay, maybe not. Okay, no questions. Great. And if you guys do have any questions, by the way, you know, don't be shy. Go ahead and type them in. And uh, if Nick or Tom doesn't answer them uh, right away, I'll have some time at the end too for Q&A, so no big deal. Okay, so now let's look at a classroom. Um, so uh, with the classroom situation, uh, I really want to show you guys uh, another product that we have. Maybe you're familiar with it, maybe not. Uh, it's not necessarily a Confrex pro uh, product, but it is, a, it is an AV Pro Edge product. It's called our Video Flux. Uh, it's also known as a multi-viewer. Uh, it's a matrix switch that you can do some really cool stuff with. Uh, so we'll see this on the next slide. I want, to, I want you guys to see this thing's capabilities. So uh, first, we're going to have the Video Flux, uh, which is our, um, our multi-viewer. Uh, in this system, we're going to have two wall plate transmitters. 
And then we're going to have two HD base T extenders, uh, receivers, if we're going long distances, or, you know, if, if you're going 40 meters, you can still get away with doing a, a straight HDMI cable if you want. Uh, so again, you're going to be able to use multiple sources on the screen, uh, multiple users. Uh, maybe you've got a classroom or maybe you've got another classroom watching you from a camera, whatever the case is. Uh, you can use all this for your inputs. So let's take a look at the, uh, at the multi-viewer and the wiring diagram here. So one unique thing about the multi-viewer, you know, we are an HDMI company, but we do know that with, uh, with, with certain applications, people might still be using component or VGA, especially for a computer that might be using VGA. So the multi-viewer is going to have uh, different types of inputs on it, uh, different styles, if you will. Um, so, you know, it's a very robust piece. It's very flexible as far as what kind of connectors you can use. So what we've got here is a, a cable box hooked up HDMI into the uh, multi-viewer. Uh, we've got another composite out source. Maybe that's a, a computer or um, just something with composite. Then we've got maybe a computer with VGA. And then maybe we've got something with component. So what we're using here is four inputs. And this particular switch has two outputs. So on output number one, um, I can show any of these four sources at once, or I can show all four sources together. Uh, the best way I can describe this is think about what, what we used to have in the, in the late 80s and early 90s when picture in picture was a big thing. You know, I could be watching um, my tuner on the big giant screen. I could be watching another source in the smaller screen. Uh, so a lot of you guys who've been around for a while may, may, may remember picture in picture. Uh, we kind of take that to the next level. Um, the old school version of picture in picture, in most cases, you just had like, the main screen here and then a smaller screen down here showing the other source. We made the multi-viewer completely flexible. So your creativity is your only limit here. If you wanna do your main source up here, three sources down here, great. You could flip flop it, do your three sources up top. You could do a four by four, or I'm sorry, two by two to make four equal sized images. You could do three over here, one here, same here. This is just a mirrored version. You can do these things in different sizes. So think about situations where you're gonna have multiple sources that might wanna be viewed at the same time. Uh, maybe you've got a camera feed from another um, from another office or another classroom, and you want to show that on the screen while you're showing the PowerPoint, for example. Uh, maybe you're in a restaurant, or maybe you're building a, a system for a retailer, and there's going to be some advertising, but you also want to show some video. So again, the, your your creativity is the only limitation here for what you can do. A uh, very very cool piece. I, I wish <laughs> I kind of wish I could find a use for it at home, just to just to play with it a little bit, but. Uh, I, don't, I don't quite have a big enough screen to handle four sources at the moment, but but maybe one day. But a very cool piece. So uh, again, on the multi-viewer, you've got your four inputs, your two outputs. Um, you've got an analog audio output here if you want to run audio to a separate amplifier. And then, of course, you've got your uh, Ethernet connection over here. That's going to be for your control. Again, Savant, RTI, Control4, Crestron, URC, uh, all the big guys you can, um, uh, you can control this with as well. So I uh, just wanted to point that multi-viewer out to you guys, let you know that it's a thing. It, it is out there. Uh, it's a very popular piece. We see it a lot in um, sports bars and retail environments and things like that. So in case you were not, um, uh, in case you didn't know about that, and hopefully you do now. Okay, moving on. Um, so here is that system that we just looked at the wiring diagram from in real life. We've got the multi-viewer. That's going to be the brains of the operation. Um, the two outputs, maybe because this display is you know really far away, uh, we can go um, we can go output HDMI here into an HD based T transmitter. Again, 40, 70, 100 meters. You can go even longer than that if you need to if you use fiber. But in this case, we're going to be using a Cat6 cable. So we've got transmitter on this side, receiver on this side. That's what's going to give this TV over here a signal. Um, the second output is going to go same thing, Ethernet. Maybe a longer run. Maybe this is a 100 meter transmitter. This is a 100 meter receiver. So. Maybe this one's 40 or 70, maybe this one's 100, that's okay, you can mix and, match, mix and match as much as you want. Uh, this is gonna go into a short throw projector shining onto this gigantic screen. Now, because the screen is so big and we're using the multi-viewer, I can use any of my inputs to show them on the screen and mix and match this as much as I want. So maybe I've got some documentation or a whiteboard over here with a camera shining on it. I want the people in the back of the room to be able to see that uh, whiteboard. So we can use this camera as a source, maybe it's hooked up composite, and I can see this whiteboard up here on the screen. And because the screen is so big, I've got my other sources, maybe a camera, like I said before, from another classroom. Maybe I've got another laptop over here from, um, uh, from, a, from, a, from a computer, maybe I'm showing a PowerPoint. Um, you know, there's a media player over here, maybe showing other things. So regardless of what the situation is, we can show all the inputs at once, we can do one, one at one time, you can really do whatever you want here. 
So again, not necessarily a Comfrex product, but it is a very popular commercial product in our line. So I wanted you guys to be aware of it and know that it existed. Okay, now let's look next at a big system. Um, this is gonna be um, a 16 by 16 AUHD HD base T-switch um, with four um, four by two Comfrex uh, matrix switches. We've got a couple of extender receivers here, um, some HDMI cables for the shorter runs. Um, and then of course you can expand this and we'll look at this in the next slide uh, with more sources or more wall plates if you need to. So let's take a look at the diagram. This is the 16 by 16. Uh, it's our biggest switch that we make so far. Um, we've got lots and lots of sources here across the top. Those sources are all gonna plug into the uh, HDMI ports of the matrix switch. Now from the output of the matrix switch, this is where things get really interesting. Uh, we could go HDMI, we could go HD base T. Uh, this switch is really cool because these little cards, you can, you can remove them and insert the ones that you need. So maybe you just need HDMI, that's great. Maybe you need HD base T and HDMI. We have a card for that. Maybe you wanna go straight fiber. We have a card for that as well. So all of these outputs in this diagram at least are connected with uh, a, an HD base T receiver. Now what you could do, because the Confrex has an HD base T input, if you wanted to use like a four by two or a six by two, what you could potentially do here is let's say for example, this is like a university, a big school. I could have each one of these as different zones with multiple inputs and multiple outputs. Now how do I do that? Now, if I take the output here and I run it all the way to this zone, maybe this is the uh, cafeteria. Instead of putting a receiver here, I can put another four by two or a six by two. That'll give me three or five more inputs for this zone. So if this zone was gonna be showing video from one of these sources and some local sources as well, all I have to do is replace this receiver with another Comfrex matrix switch. So I could potentially have one zone that's in the cafeteria, one zone's in the gym, one zone's in the biology lab, one zone's in the chemistry lab. So, you know, if there's a global announcement that needs to be made across the entire campus, you know, from a specific source up here, we can show that source on every single zone. But if that local zone, maybe it's the gym, maybe they also have a media player to play music in the gym, uh, they can have that source just local to that zone. So as robust as this system looks, just looking at it like this, you can go even further if you want to. You can add more um, more inputs, you can add more wall plates. Uh, so again, each one of these zones could be kind of treated custom and treated independently from the rest of the system, which I think is really, really cool. Okay, moving on, let's look further. So we talked a lot about these different products and, and showed you some different diagrams of, of uh, some common situations that we run into, but let's take a look at some custom things. Um, again, we wanted to make these products robust and versatile. Um, you know, if you're doing more than just a single room, single zone, or more than uh, some of the diagrams we looked at already, uh, we want to we want to show you guys how how much you can customize this. So what we're looking at in the picture here, this looks like an auditorium, maybe in a university, where it looks like this is a uh, looks like this is a uh, eight input, eight output. Uh, looks like an eight by eight matrix switch. So I've got all my sources here. These wall plate transmitters are my sources, so people could plug in laptops and whatever they need to do. Maybe there's a 4K camera because this is a gigantic room with a gigantic screen. Media player, maybe you've got a desktop PC that lives there full time. Um, you know, whatever the case is, we've got all of our inputs here. All of our outputs are gonna be over here onto the right side of the unit. The outputs are gonna be connected to um, our different uh, displays with, um, with receivers, so HD base T receivers. Um, you know, you can use the 100 meter, the 70 meter, the 40 meter, whatever the case is. Um, we've got our LAN control over here for, for Crestron, Control 4, whatever we want to do there. We've also got some IR outputs over here. So if you want to be able to control some of these devices, maybe this media player has an IR sensor and you want to be able to control it through the switch, we can totally do that. And then your audio, you can pull here as well. So which, with, uh, with each output, you can pull the audio either toss link or analog, and you can power maybe uh, an amplifier or, or send signal to an amplifier that might be powering a pair of speakers in this classroom. Next, I want to show you the ramp that, that I kind of talked about before. Now this is really unique, uh, and I've never seen anything like this before. This is a really cool product. Not only does this uh, do, your, um, do your HDMI switching, uh, your matrix switching like we've discussed already, but you've also got the microphone input here as well with the auto ducking. So maybe you're in a situation in a classroom, it's a big room, the professor likes to wear a lapel mic, maybe it's a restaurant where somebody has to call out orders or make announcements. Um, you know, what's really cool here is you can adjust the gain of the microphone. So how loud is that microphone gonna be when somebody speaks into it? We can also adjust the amount of ducking that it does. So if I want 
if I want somebody's voice to really overpower the music when they start speaking, I can set this level pretty high. Or if I want it to be, you know, about as even as far as the music goes and how loud it is, I can set it sort of in the middle. If I want the announcement to be quieter than what the um, what the music is playing, then I can go a little bit lower. So I have full control here over how loud the mic is and how loud the the the, the person speaking is over the music. Now, what really makes this guy different is the uh, audio output here is uh, on the right side of the back of the unit. So I can connect speakers directly to this. So this not only acts like my matrix switch, but it also is my audio amplifier as well. And you guys, you, especially you integrators know, uh, you know, one less box in the system is, is usually a good thing. It's one less thing to worry about, one less thing to have to purchase, you know, one less thing to have to program. So we wanted to build something really cool and unique here. Not only does it do all the switching for you, but it's also gonna do, uh, it's also gonna power these, uh, these speakers up here in the room as well. So the wiring diagram is pretty easy. We've got a computer plugged into a, an HDMI wall plate. That's gonna be HD base T into the switch. And of course our output is gonna be uh, you know, up here to this TV. Uh, we've got a microphone plugged in right here. We've got uh, distributed audio here in case there's uh, separate rooms or separate zones you wanna hear the music or hear the microphone in. But for the local speakers that might be in that room, you've got a speaker output right here. So a uh, little Phoenix connector, you you pin it out, you wire it out. It's all really uh, labeled nicely and clearly here. You know which one's left and right. You know it's positive and negative. Uh, we made it very, very simple for you guys. Now, what does this look like in real life? That's just the wiring diagram. In real life, you may have an office space where you've got, um, uh, you've got your display up here. You've got your source down here. This could be a wall plate uh, with HDMI, with, with uh, mini display port, with USB-C, any combination of those things that you want to. So this person is going to come into this office. They're going to plug their laptop into the wall plate. The wall plate's going to automatically switch over to whatever input it needs to be on because it's signal sensing. That wall plate's going to send signal to the 6x2 via this Ethernet cable right here. The video conferencing PC, so these guys can look at what we're looking at in this room. That's also going to be another source here. So I've got one source here, one source here. The two outputs, this one's connected HDMI to this transmitter. Uh, again, if, if this 4K display has HD base T straight in, then we don't need this transmitter. We can go HD base T straight out, which is cool. But if not, if it's a display with just HDMI, we HDMI out. This converts to Ethernet. Boom, we're HD base T into this display. Uh, the display over here on the right, uh, that's a 70 meter extender. We're going to go HDMI into that. And again, uh, category cable over here to this display. Uh, so the people that are, you know, halfway across the world or in another city or whatnot, um, you know, they can they can watch, they can listen, uh, they can show their screens, they can do all kinds of cool stuff here. Uh, behind the display is going to be your really thin uh, EX70 uh, receiver. Uh, that's really nice. It's a cool piece. It's very thin. You guys have probably seen it before. Um, what a lot of folks will do is they'll just Velcro it to the back of the uh, TV and you'll never see it. It's out of sight, out of mind. So again, uh, another example of, of how the Comfrex system will help you uh, in a situation where maybe you've got some video conferencing or or you're in some kind of huddle space or an office space. Okay, let's move a little further. Let's go a little more complicated. So uh, in this particular situation, we've got a four by four matrix switch. We've also got a couple of Comfrex pieces. So let's see what's going on here. Uh, we've got four different zones here of audio and video. Uh, zone number one is actually gonna be just video. So maybe it's showing just uh, you know a PowerPoint or maybe it's advertising or whatnot. Um, the sources are gonna be uh, 4K sources, uh, if, if you need 4K sources, uh, you know, we can have PCs, cable boxes, media players, uh, Blu-ray players, you know, whatever the case is, you've got all of your four sources, your 4K sources here. Um, now what's really running this particular system is going to be this 4x4 matrix switch. So I've got sources directly plugged in right here, and the output of this matrix switch is going to be what's showing on these displays throughout this project. Now, if I want this zone to have more than just one input or two inputs or three or four inputs way over here, maybe I have some local inputs. So instead of going HDMI or HD base T straight out of this switch into the display, we're gonna put one of the Comfrex pieces in the middle. Now, since for this specific zone, I've got a ramp, I can power these speakers because the amplifier is built in. I can also use this switch as one of my inputs, but I can also have lo other local inputs as well. So again, maybe this specific zone needs a specific input, maybe a media player because they play music in here. They've got speakers. Maybe this is a gym. Who knows? But my output from the switch goes into the Comfrex piece, and then from the Comfrex piece, the output goes into the, to the display itself. And then, of course, I can, I can power my speakers here as well. But I can do this for what you see here in the diagrams, three phones.
or uh, three zones rather. Uh, the fourth zone over here, maybe they're playing music from somebody's cell phone. So of course you can use that as an input over here as well. So we can keep things very simple with just doing four different TVs and you know all the TVs are showing whatever source you want or all the sources at once. But I wanted to show you guys the expandability of this. All we have to do is throw in a four by two or a six by two Comfrex before the display itself and I can, I can expand this as much as I want to. Pretty cool. Okay, moving on, we got a couple more for you and then we'll give you some Q&A time. Um, this is another example of when to use the ramp. Um, I've got a, um, I've got my 4K source over here. Um, this is going into a 100 meter uh, HD base T extender. Um, we go uh, Ethernet, HDMI into the extender. Ethernet goes into our, uh, this is a, it looks like a, uh, oh, that's the ramp. Okay, so the, the Ethernet cable plugs into the HD base T input on the ramp. The output uh, of the ramp can go straight into the projector. And maybe that projector has two, uh, you know, pair of speakers flanking each side. We're going to go ahead and power those speakers with the ramp. So what do we have going on here? I've got a projector showing 4K 18 gig video if needed. Um, I've also got a pair of speakers. So this is a good example of like a single room, single zone system. And all I needed to, to purchase from AV Pro to get this system to work like this is the one extender piece and and the uh, the ramp. That's all we needed to make this system work. So again, no need for extra boxes less things to program, less things to worry about, less things to take up space in a rack or in the storage area, whatever the case is. Uh, now, if we look a little further, we'll take a look at another similar system, but with a four by two instead of the ramp. Um, now, the four by two is gonna have the microphone input, just like the ramp does. So I can do my, um, I can do my voiceover, my, I speak over at a restaurant, or in this case, maybe a classroom, maybe it's big, I need a microphone so everybody can hear me. Um, my sources are going to be connected directly in to these three inputs. Maybe I've got an HD base T input here with a, maybe there's a wall plate somewhere over here near the projector screen or whatnot. So our source is going to plug into the wall plate because that's HD base T. We're going to go Ethernet straight in. So no need for a converter or adapter. It's going to go straight in Ethernet. Our four 4K sources are down here plugged in HDMI. Uh, HD base T out could be plugged into this. Uh, maybe this is a projector or a display directly with HD base T. Uh, if it's HDMI only, no big deal. We can just add a, another receiver on this side. Uh, and then maybe this display is a little bit shorter run. So this is just straight HDMI uh, out of the switch into the 4K display. Again, your microphone connection, your Ethernet connection here for control. Um, your IR, um, IR pass through is here. Audio output is here for, for audio amplifier or audio distribution. So again, one piece does it all. Well, minus the wall plate, of course, which you would use for your input. So just another example. Now, guys, with all that being said, uh, one thing I just want to remind you, if you're new to us, um, you know, one of the things we pride ourselves on is our warranty. And, you know, us being the manufacturer and us owning the factory allows us to do things like this. Uh, we give you guys a 10-year uh, advanced replacement warranty. We call it our no BS warranty. Um, so, you know, you call us up and we do some troubleshooting. Maybe something is wrong. Um, you know, we do advanced replacements on these things. So you don't have to pull the system out, rip everything apart, rip the rack together. Uh, we're going to be able to send you these products. So when you go to switch that product out, uh, it's as simple as possible. And we do cover these things for 10 years. Uh, and again, being the manufacturer and owning our own factory, um, th this allows us to be very, very uh, liberal with our with our, um, with our our warranty. Um, so I, I want you guys to make sure you knew that if you didn't already. And then last but not least, let's see if there's any questions. Um, I will check the question box. It looks like Nick and Tom have just been on top of this. So I really thank you guys for that. Uh, let's see. Give me one moment. Let me make this bigger. Okay. So it looks like Nick and Tom answered most questions. Um, there was one question from Kevin I see here for the CX42. Is the mic gain slash ducking control done via the software since there are no controls built into the back of it? Uh, Kevin, that's a great question. Uh, there are two potentiometers on the back of the ramp. Uh, give me a moment and I'll pull that up again. So on the back of the ramp, you do have these uh, little potentiometers right here that allow you to adjust the gain and the uh, the amount of voiceover that's actually happening over the over the music, for example. So this is going to be controlled manually uh, on the back here. Now, as far as um, controlling that volume later, maybe with your control software, uh, let me dig into that. Let me ask you. I've only known uh, to do it, uh, you, know, you know, manually uh, right there on the unit itself. Uh, but hey, um, Jason. Oh yeah, go ahead. How uh, I don't mean to jump in here, but no, uh, hey, uh, Kevin has a great question, and and I think that that's really great to look at. You do have mic gain, you know, you have gain, and you have voiceover controls on the back, 
but Kevin, you do, you can access this via IP. So if you put this on the network and then you visit the IP address, you have a extremely robust system where you're able to um, get down to the detail of exactly the percentage levels that you want for auto ducking, exactly what's going to come in for on your audio ins and your audio outs. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it is a very, very robust system that's going to allow, allow you to do switching, control all the controls, as well as um, all your audio features. So definitely, I would say if I was setting up a system, I would figure out exactly kind of what I was looking for. I would set it, hook it up to the network, get get attached to this um, piece, the the ramp, the CX100 ramp via IP controls, and we right through any browser you can set all of that. And then once it's set, it's good to go. If you ever needed to make adjustments, you can always do it on the fly as well. So I just want to jump in there with that, Jason. Um, no, but thank yeah, you, great job. You can finish up. You know, it's thing. funny. I'm glad you mentioned that because I've only known to do it, you know, manually. So so thank you for that. That That's helpful for me as well. Great. Um, and then it looks like one more question came in. Um, uh, he doesn't see the microphone input on the diagram. Okay, so you can do this a couple of ways, Kevin. Um, the easiest way to do it is just a 3.5 millimeter uh, input right here on the microphone. Uh, hopefully you can see it on on your screen you're looking at, but it is in between the two uh, the mic gain and the voiceover controls. So you know if the microphone is maybe XLR or something, you will have to to uh, adapt it down to uh, 3.5 millimeter to um, uh, to make it work and, and plug into this unit. So great question, thank you for asking. Um, and it looks like one more question may have came in. Does this system have a two by two video wall capability? Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, no video wall capabilities on this, but we do have other video wall products. Um, we have one piece that's kind of new to us that, that I really am excited about called a Cap4, where it is a plug and play video wall uh, switch. So you plug in your source, it is expandable. Um, it's got four outputs on it. You plug those four outputs into your four displays. And the only thing you have to do as an integrator is measure the bezels and put in the bezel compensation into the, into the web browser, into the, into the software. Very, very easy plug and play. That's called a Fresco Cap4. If you want to take a look at that on the website, feel free. Uh, then of course you also have the cloud nine which is kind of our our, our big daddy um uh nine input nine output expandable forever you, know, you can have nine inputs a million outputs if you want to and, and a lot of folks use that as a video wall processor too which is super cool um okay guys i think that uh answers all of the questions i don't see any more new ones in the box here uh, in any case if you guys do have questions uh later you're uh you're always welcome to reach out um you know our sales guys are 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 ready to rock and roll and answer your questions. So, you know, at any time, feel free to um, to give us a call at the office. Uh, and as soon as I get to the slide here, you guys will see my information. And boom, here we go. So if you wanna give us a call, our phone number is right here on the screen, 605-274-6055. Uh, we have guys on standby ready to answer any questions and help you build, build your system. Uh, we also have online um, chat as well. So if you go to our website, if you look in the bottom right corner, you can always chat with uh, with with any of our guys. Uh, if you want to uh, reach out, maybe you have a question and you don't have time to give us a call, that's okay. You can always shoot us an email, info at avproedge.com. And if you guys have any specific questions for me, uh, my door's always open for you. Feel free to, to email away. Mine's really simple. It's jason at avproglobal.com. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for joining. Uh, cool webinar, lots of cool products. I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, if you do have any questions, like I said, feel free to reach out and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, enjoy your weekend. And maybe we'll see some of you guys at the next show, which I believe is Infocom from here. So thanks again, and we'll see you guys later.